Looks like the Indiana Fever got a reality check playing against the good team and good coached Minnesota Lynx. The first half was great. First half for the Indiana Fever. They ended the game. Uh, they ended the first half. Second quarter started. They were up by six, 27-21. And then they had a relatively decent second period. Minnesota battled back at the end of going into the second half. Indiana had a two-point lead. They were distributing the ball, very up-tempo. Minnesota has uh, a good team with Hines Allen and Fee Collier, and they got a couple of good shooters on that team. Indiana was handling their own. They played the up-tempo offense, and they kept taking it to them. You already know Minnesota has good shooters, has great players. They're going to get the ball to Fee Collier, and she's going to make things happen. The third quarter and the fourth quarter is, is pretty much where it happened. I want to say it was about, so you get to about the five-minute mark, and it's still a two-point game. It's a one-possession game at about 521, 55 to 57. Boston hits a layup, and they're kind of going back and forth trading blows. And then all of a sudden, there is a almost like a, a five to seven point swing because it's 57 to 60. So that it's a one possession game. Collier's shooting free throws and it takes it to 61, 57. Collier hits another layup, it's 63 to 57. Collier hits a, a mid range jumper, 65 to 57. And then finally, Caitlin Clark hits a three and makes it 65 to 60. So now they're trying to battle back. And here's the swing right here. So Clark hits a three, 65 to 60. And then Williams comes down and hits a three, 68 to 60. Then Caden Clark misses a layup, 70 to 60. Now you got a double digit lead. Hines Allen takes it to the rack, 72 to 60. No timeout, mind you. And then you go from, let me see. You go from 131 down to about 30 seconds left and nobody scores. Hines Allen hits two free throws, 73 to 60. Kelsey Mitchell gets fouled. She hits two free throws. So now it's 73 to 62. Still a double digit lead. Um, and that's the end. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, Smith hits two free throws. So now it's 74 62, 12 point lead to end the third. And Christy Sides still has timeouts. Never decided to hit his timeout to stop the bleeding and just kept it running. And I think that's the big frustration with Christy Sides. Her highs are highs, and then her lows are really low. You can question her lineups at times. And here's the thing, and this is just my opinion on Christy Sides. She knows what she's doing. However, you can tell her lack of experience in certain situations because you look at all the other teams, and I'm using these examples because these coaches have the lion's share of experience just from what I see. And again, I always preface this by saying I'm a rookie fan. But I know I've done enough homework to know which coaches have the most experience. I know Brandello in New York, Becky Hammonds, Cheryl Reeve, and some others. They got good experience. But let me give you an example. There are some players on the bench that never get any clock. And that's the way that it should be. When you are at the professional level, unless there's some rules that I don't know about, when you are at the professional level, you keep your star players in until they need a rest. Then you get them rest and then get them right back in the game. You don't leave your star players out four or five minutes when your team is taking it on the chin, whether it's offensively or defensively. There's a reason why your starters are your starters, and the best coaches know how to make those adjustments. If you're going to take Caitlin Clark out, Caitlin Clark should be out maybe two minutes max. Get her back in the game. Sometimes it seems like Christy Size has affinity for certain players, Erica Wheeler, Katie Lou Samuelson. Lexi Hall has been playing lights out. Her defense has been stellar. She's another one. If you're going to take her out of the game, let her get a rest, get her back in ASAP. Kelsey Mitchell, if you're going to take her out of the game, let her get some rest, get her back in ASAP. You don't want Erica Wheeler in the game for too long. Again, I would rather see Grace Berger than Wheeler. You're talking about a bigger player that doesn't get lost in the weeds. Erica Wheeler is still quick enough to get to the rack. However, she's, she's a liability with her size because she's just not that quick anymore compared to a lot of other players. So I would rather see Berger take it to the rack or the Celeste Taylor thing is water under the bridge, but you got to have a better option to give 
Kaylin Clark some rest. And I think your best option is Berger, not to, not Erica Wheeler. Those decisions that Christy Size makes are the things that kind of get her in trouble. You can't not use the timeouts. My rule is, is if there's a, if there's a five or a five to eight point run, depending on how things go, you, you call the timeout quick. Stop the bleed. Get everybody together. Get your people back in the game. Sometimes your star players might only get a rest for 60 seconds. Then they got to go right back. That's why they're star players. And you got to use them as such. You don't have to play everybody in the game. Erica Wheeler doesn't have to get minutes. Katie Lou doesn't have to get minutes. They're backups for a reason. Let them back up and get your star players rest and get them back in the game. And that hopefully won't be a valuable lesson or a painful lesson that Indiana has to learn in the playoffs. Indiana had every opportunity to beat Minnesota, and that would have been a phenomenal win because Minnesota is a good team. So that would have been a phenomenal win. That's That would have been a statement win. Minnesota is a great team, a playoff team. That is the hurdle that Christie Sides has to get over.